I wish to speak a word for nature, for absolute freedom and wildness, and not a freedom and a culture that is merely civil. I wish to regard man as an inhabitant of nature, and not merely as a member of society. I wish to make an extreme statement, so that I may make an emphatic one. For there are enough champions of civilization. The minister and the school committee will see to that. And here is my extreme statement. In wildness is the preservation of the world. In wildness is the preservation of the world. Trees send forth their fibers in search of what I am calling the wild. Cities import at any price the wild. Men plow and they sail for the wild. From the forest, from the wilderness, from the great oceans of the world come the tonics which brace mankind. We need the tonic of wildness. We need to wade sometimes in, in, in marshes where the bittern and the meadow hen lurk. We need to smell the whispering sedge where some more wild fowl builds her nest. And we need to spy the mink crawling on its belly close to the ground. At the same time that we are earnest to learn and to explore all things, we paradoxically require that all things remain mysterious, unsurveyed and unfathomed by us because ultimately they are unfathomable. We can never have enough of wild nature. The seacoast with its wrecks, the wilderness with its living and decaying trees, the thundercloud and the rain, which lasts three weeks and produces fantastic floods. We need to witness our limits transgressed and some life pasturing freely where we hardly ever wander. In those moments, when we confront the wild, when we confront the raw material of life, in those moments, we will begin to realize who and where we are. And most importantly, we will begin to realize the infinite, the infinite extent of our relations. <laughs>